Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and what I wanted to do today was actually start off a new video line uh, where I basically I'm going to be summarizing the Around the Verse and Reverse the Verse as quickly as possible for y'all, so you can then decide if you had the time to go spend watching the 15 to an hour long video that they sometimes put out. Um, this was actually a suggestion from Chef, one of my patrons, so thank you for the idea. So we're going to go ahead and start off with Around the Verse. This was in Frankfurt, uh, and they're really spending their time right now preparing for 2.6. It's basically where their focus is. And Evocati right now, sometimes known as the Avocados, are currently working working on the flight balance changes. Um, now, they're going to be working on other things as well, like the Herald and the Hoplite are expected to be available in 2.6. Um, they're also talking about the music logic system, and if you're not familiar with what the music logic system is, it basically is going to change what type of music you're hearing based on what type of situation you're in. So right now in the Persistent Universe, when you get into combat, you get more exciting music than when you're just flying around. Some of that's also going to be worked into Star Marine as well, uh, which is currently being tested internally. Now, when I say it's being tested internally, that's with internal. QA that's not with the ETF yet so the avocados don't have their hands on it meaning it's not around the corner too quickly um, they're still working hard on the network refactoring, which I think is something we're all really excited about because it gives a more stable experience, it provides us with more ships, it means a better frame rate. All of those things are coming, they're working hard on it, probably not in 2.6, I would expect to see the first iteration of that probably in 3.0. Uh, the QA team in Frankfurt, we got a little highlight on what they actually do. Um, they basically go in, review what the developers and the engineers have created, and they're going to look for game-breaking bugs, visual artifact issues, and other experiences that are going to cause bad gameplay experiences. And the example we got was specifically about uh, implementation of clouds in the star and how it in, uh, created these flickering shadows. And once they actually get that information, they report it back to the developers and engineers, and they work in conjunction to get it fixed, which then ships out to us. Uh, every month subscribers get a free ship to fly, and this month the free ship of the month is the uh, M50, so November is the M50 for you uh, CIG subscribers. Um, now the Homestead demo was talked about being more than just a showcase for us, and I think that's what we mostly saw there was, wow, look how far this has come. And it was really cool, but it's actually a big step for them to test out their planetary tools and editors, which is important because it gives them a chance to still work on improving the technology. And one of those technologies they're still working on is like procedural plant life placement and arrangement, basically meaning you don't want to have a cluster of six redwood trees that are gigantic within two meters. It doesn't look natural, so they want to get it to a point to where the arrangement and placement is a very immersive experience. Um, they've successfully implemented a rotating planet, which is very cool, and it has some gameplay implications as a result. Uh, clouds are now variable in size, thickness, width. Uh, it, they create shadows on the ground now, and the lighting that ends up hitting the planet is determined based on some of those cloud attributes. Uh, Reverse the Verse was a panel with the environmental artist and director of cinematics for Squadron 42. Um, they have implemented some environmental changes over time, basically meaning that they're working to make it so, you know, if there's a lot of logging going on in a certain area, it's not like trees are just going to pop back up in full form. Um, you're going to be able to see the difference in the impact of activities on a planet side. Um, there's not much to do with water today. Now, they've actually implemented the water, which is really cool looking. It looks really sharp, um, but it's not real interactive. You're not going to go for a swim. There are plans for it to be more interactive and have a different impact on our experience in the game, though. Um, cities are challenging from a procedurally generation uh, standpoint because you want to actually see them and if you spend a lot of time there it needs to have a unique feel to it. They are working on some procedural generation though using large objects hopefully meaning that a lot of the cities that are going to be on a lot of these planets are going to be able to be created very quickly. Some places like Art Corp where we spend a lot of time aren't necessarily going to need or be that because they need to be more handcrafted. Um, the cutscenes in Squadron 42 are mostly going to be done using CryEngine, which is great news because that means that they're going to look exactly the same as in-game quality, and we know the in-game quality is beautiful. Now, they're trying to make it a little bit more interactive than just a video, so you can do things like look around during cutscenes with some limited control. Now, there are going to be some points where you're going to be locked in, like when you're being briefed on a mission, so you're not missing out on the moments, but they know that those can be kind of frustrating, and people a lot of times try and bypass them, so those moments should be very minimal. And finally, when talking about crash ships, um, they're going to be more one-off items. Uh, they're not necessarily going to be procedurally, generationally placed. Um, they're going to be placed by the developers or the engineers with purpose, so they look really cool and have an immersive feel to them when you see them. It's not always going to be that same javelin that we saw in Homestead placed on a bunch of different planets. Now, they do want to do some automation of this to a certain extent, and I believe they're specifically talking about planet-side crashes, um, but the goal is to make it a very cool feeling when you do find one of those. 
So if there's anything there you want more information on, go watch the videos. Uh, if you have questions about any of it, you can just let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned for a whole lot more content, and we'll do another one of these next week. Take care.